Thank you, Jean-François. <coughs> and thank you to the organizers for uh, organizing this uh, incredibly rich summer school and for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak. But before I start the talk, I, I would like to use my modest voice to say how sad it is for mathematics, for science, and for mankind in general to, uh, to lose a woman like Mari Mariam Mirzakhani. Uh, besides her genius for <coughs> mathematics that we cannot copy, uh, her courage and dedication to, to science are an example for all of us. So, um, in order to, well, so this talk will not uh, treat uh, of. Uh, any spectral property, but uh, if we admit that the Riemann hypothesis is uh, connected to uh, almost everything in mathematics, so maybe <laughs> it's uh, in the scope. Um, so I write to in introduce uh, this famous problem. So the story uh, starts in, uh, in 1859 when uh, Bernard Freeman is elected at the um, German Academy of Science and he, um, he writes at that occasion an eight pages paper which will have a tremendous impact over all the generations. And um, this paper is, uh, the title is about the distribution of prime numbers. And uh, what he discovers is that this distribution of prime numbers is connected with the, um, what would be called the Riemann zeta function. But the, This is it. But before Riemann, uh, this function was considered as a function defined on, on R, on the real numbers. Uh, and uh, he, he, it's a very, it's a novelty that to consider it as a function from, from starting from com com complex numbers. And um, in this eight pages paper, he, well, you see in, th in this writing, you see that this, this has sense only when the real part of S is strictly uh, bigger than one. And uh, what uh, he's able to do is to, to extend this definition to, to the all complex uh, plane minus one. So maybe uh, since it, it is a summer school, I, I could try to be as didactical as possible and and show you how the the, the way it is possible to extend this function. Um, uh, first of all, you can make some uh, Abel transformation and say that this sum is equal to the sum of uh, uh, all n greater than 1 of n times uh, n to the minus s minus n plus 1 to the minus s. Uh, and transform it like uh, 
this is an integral from n to n plus 1 of n is, you, you write it as uh, the integral part of x on this interval. And then, um, put the right function, which is this one. So you can uh, change it as this. You you can write you can write this uh, integer part uh, part as x minus. Uh, plus um, minus x minus x so what you get is that uh, this is equal to s divided by s minus 1 and this it's just, uh, it's just an, the integration of a uh, bounded function divided by, divided by x to the s plus 1. So it is defined for com complex numbers whose uh, real part now is strictly uh, positive. Instead, so we, we, we gained some 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 some, uh, uh, some domain uh, some domain uh, some extra domain and uh, so the price to pay is that we have here a pole and um, so uh, uh, so Riemann with this and the extra um, functional relation is the he's also proving in this eight pages paper which connects the value of data at s with uh, with the value uh, of, of data at one minus s is uh, able to, to, to define completely uh, data on the whole set uh, C minus 1. Um, another remark here that you can see that uh, when, when S is, um, belongs to to the set of uh, even negative num neg negative numbers, then um, <coughs> the value of data uh, vanishes because of the presence here of the sinus uh, pi a s divided by two. But uh, for uh, positive numbers, you see that it's not the case. But this comes from the presence of of, of pole. Uh, for gamma, uh, for negative numbers. So you have this picture so data is not defined uh, as a pole at one and has uh, roots for negative, uh, f for um, even negative numbers. And what the conjectures say that the other uh, roots of data are uh, concentrated on this real line. The first one known is uh, is around uh, four 
in second coordinates. Uh, one half plus uh, i times 14, something like that. Um, and in this, also in this eight pages paper, he is able to connect um, the, the, the properties of data with um, not exactly the distribution of the prime numbers, but the distribution of the, of the powers of prime numbers. And uh, in order to get uh, um, really information on the distribution of prime numbers, um, we have to wait uh, almost 40 years uh, with the results by um, Adama and uh, Lavalle Poussin. who are uh, able to prove that if you mm, denote by pi of x the number of prime numbers uh, which are smaller than x, pi of x is equivalent to uh, x divided by log of x plus infinity. Yeah, plus infinity. But still, this doesn't uh, really um, connect. If yeah, the proof connects. Use um, uh, is a big achievement com use using uh, complex analysis, the 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 Riemann zeta function, and um, but uh, the Riemann hypothesis uh, is uh, really. Um, uh, linked uh, with the distribution of prime numbers by the, uh, the theorem of, of von Koch in uh, 1901, which states that the Riemann hypothesis is equivalent to some some finer asymptotics of pi of x, which is the following. So actually this function is equivalent to that one, but uh, this is not that one, plus an, uh, an error term, which is uh, small o of x to the one half plus epsilon for every epsilon strictly positive. So, so it says that uh, you can really have have a, a fine uh, estimation of the probability for an for an integer to be prime. So today, we are not going uh, to ask uh, this question about what is the probability for one integer to be prime. We are going to ask another question, uh, which is what I if you take two random integers, what is the probability that they are co-prime, OK? So this, like that, this, what is the probability that two random integers are co-prime. Of course, uh, if you don't define the, the way you choose them, uh, it doesn't make sense. So maybe you can start with the most natural choice one would like to, mm, to take. Uh, consider x and uh, y. 
are distributed, like in the von Kohr theorem, uniformly on one n. Okay. And one can one can can be said in this case. So you have one, let's say uh, one. So you have all that these points, which which are uh, so this is zero. All these points are okay. All these ones are also are okay. And uh, you see, for for uh, four, you have all this this one, one and three, only that that ones, etc. So. If we denote by p of n this probability, well, you have uh, n, n square point, and um, you just for each k between one and n, you have. Uh, the, mm, the, the 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 number of of, of coordinates be uh, less than k, which are uh, co prime with k. It's uh, phi of k. So uh, you and you have also the same on the other side here. So the 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 number for each k you have two times phi of k <coughs> points which are okay and uh, you you have only uh, one here so you have to to subtract uh, one if you want to be uh, completely exact and uh, and this we know Actually, the, the limit of P of n when n goes to infinity is known. And we know it's this limit is equal to uh, 6 divided by P to the square. Um, maybe I can give you an intuition of why is, is it is equal to, to the limit is equal to 6 divided by P to the square. It's uh, rather simple. Admit that this this um, this set of points, the set of points, let's uh, denote it by Q, which are uh, uh, points uh, of uh, n to, to the square with co prime coordinates. Admit that Q has a density. Then you can you can write. Um, You, you can write n <coughs> square as the union, the disjoint union of q, 2q, 3q, etc. But if uh, q has an as asymptotic density, then the asymptotic density of q is, is d, well, let's say, let's say d, plus uh, this uh, asymptotic density will be d divided by 4, etc. And the sum of all of them will be 1. So that d is equal to 6 divided by p squared. I, it's not a proof since we, I didn't prove that, that it, uh, it had a density, actually. But... Um, if we want, 
But this is true. You can find a proof of it in the Ardian uh, Wright uh, book, uh, uh, Introduction to the Theory of Numbers. And um, if, if, we, if we want to have um, a result uh, uh, in the spirit of von Koch, uh, then you see that it's not, you have some fluctuations which are quite strong. Uh, imagine that uh, the new, f mm, you have some p of n minus 1, and then the new n is a prime number. Then, hop at once, or you, you, all at once, you, you, you will get uh, an extra uh, phi, phi of n will be equal to n, and you, you will have a fluctuation of 1 divided by n, which is we, we feel this, these are uh, quite huge oscillations, fluctuations of this, of this quantity. So the, the, the fluctuations of, of this quantity were, um, are quite tough to study, and they were studied by, um, by uh, Mertens in um, 1874, I think. And uh, who, th who proved that the, um, the, the oscillations were uh, not bigger than uh, log n divided by n. And uh, this, this was uh, ameliorated by uh, Valfish in 1963. And the log n was log n to the two third. And the, the, the fluctuations were also. Um, um, bounded from, from below by uh, Con Conway, and uh, it's a very, but n not no result like that, like, uh, like s as clear as von Koch in the case when the distribution you take is uniform on, uh, on one n. So we change the probability distribution and take another one which is, uh, for probabilists, uh, rather natural, since uh, you take x and y geometrically distributed. So that's what we do. And I can state. result I obtained with Julien and myself. <coughs> Julien is now teaching mathematics, but uh, I hopefully will go on uh, doing research. He's a very talented guy. Um, so, we take x and y, two independent random variables geometrically distributed with some parameter 1 minus e to the minus beta. Well, I could have taken beta, but it's uh, more convenient like that. And so the Riemann hypothesis is equivalent to the fact that the probability that these two random variables are coprime is when beta goes to zero, because beta goes to zero, it makes you choose uh, large, large integers, which is the interest. So you recover this 6 divided by p, pi to the square plus
So this takes the place of uh, this, uh, this integral. And if you have a narrow term, which is uh, beta to the three, 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 three halves minus epsilon for all epsilon, uh, then uh, uh, the Riemann hypothesis is true. So I can show you the proof of it, which uh, is uh, surprisingly rather uh, not so complicated, and at least uh, much m m much much simpler than 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 uh, than von Koch von Koch result. So. I guess that uh, you will prefer uh, me to, to show you the this this way <laughs> because if you are able to prove this and you <laughs> will finish you'll be able to finish the job so and for me it's more convenient So, hmm? uh, I, I be, you mean uh, this? Yeah. This should be the parameter. Maybe <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> when I when I will be not <laughs> teaching, I will <laughs> change my. <laughs> You, you can write explicitly this uh, probability and find that uh, it's um, and and find uh, that it's e equal to that. So if we denote this sum um, by f of beta, this uh, expansion is uh, equivalent to uh, that one. So that so that um, what we have to prove is, is that if we know this, then uh, the Riemann uh, hypothesis is true. So what we are going to, to take is the Millin transform of f of beta. So it is equal to the sum of when you take the million transform of, of, of e to the minus beta times x plus y, what you get is 1 divided by x plus uh, 1 x plus y to the s and some uh, gamma term 
in factor. Okay, so this sum is not so nice because of the um, of the indices, which are not uh, a nice subset of uh, n to the square. But the the trick, uh, the only trick here, is here, and is consists in multiplying and dividing by zeta of s. And when, when you do that, it's, uh, this sum is much simpler since you get the sum over all pairs of x and y. Okay. And this And this is simple to, to, to compute uh, using the data function since uh, you can, you can uh, sum uh, on pairs of x and y having a, um, a given sum. And then what you have got is uh, for for a given uh, k the number of uh, of pairs whose sum is k is equal to k minus one. So that what you get is s minus one minus. So, uh, so it's this is interesting since you you, you see you, you have uh, here the the data uh, data uh, the de denominator. So that's the reason why we are going to 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 see the Riemann conjecture appear, and this is really due to the fact that the indices were taken only on 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 this uh, co-prime <coughs> pairs. So, uh, and, 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 and this trick. <coughs> now it's already, oh, oh. it's almost, almost finished. Since we go back to the left hand side, and write that this uh, integral from zero to infinity, we split it into the integral from zero to one of f of beta minus six plus, plus uh, this in integral from uh, the integral of that from 0 to 1, which is equal to don't tell me I, uh, I have to compute it. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's uh, plus the integral from uh, 1 to infinity of f of, f of beta times beta. But 
this is, since you see what is inside f of beta, you have some of exponentials, so it's the, it, d it doesn't make, the convergence doesn't make any problem, and this is holomorphic on, on C. And with this assumption on, on f of beta, you can see that you have a, 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 a power of beta to the, to the s minus 1 uh, minus 1 half plus epsilon. So that you see that it's holomorphic on complex numbers whose real part is larger than 1 half plus epsilon. So it means that if this is defined on all complex numbers whose real part is uh, larger than one half plus epsilon, then data doesn't vanishes on that region. And by symmetry, the, it, the, it does not vanishes on, on the symmetric uh, region with respect to uh, one half either. Um, the other uh, the converse is um, is a con is is a little bit harder but not much much more but it's it relies on um it, it, it relies on um, uh, 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 inverse Mellin transform for formula that, that um, writes uh, f of beta in terms of, of, uh, of a contour integral of this, uh, of, of this function. And then, uh, if you mm, and, and then you apply residue theorem and get uh, the what you what you want? Well, may, maybe just I can write you the inverse. positive C you have that and with uh, assumption of uh, on, 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 on data and applying uh, the residue theorem then you you will uh, you 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 can find um, the, the 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 expansion on F the this expansion on F of beta Uh, you see, uh, well, yes, and you apply it for for some uh, at least for all C strictly uh, bigger than uh, you have to avoid uh, strictly bigger than than two. I would say, in order to 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 avoid. Uh, And for s equal to two, you have uh, you have here a pole which is one. It's, uh, it's, uh, it was the the, um, the computation in the introduction, and the residue you see here is gamma of two, which is one divided by zeta of two, which is uh, pi squared divided by six. So you 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 get back the And since you don't have any 
if you don't have any zero in, in some strip, then you, you will see that the, the term after will be, uh, will, will be uh, you know, O of one divided by uh, this. So, in the title, I uh, said uh, two equivalent versions of the Riemann hypothesis, so I, I gave only one. Uh, so I have to, to give you the, the second one, which actually was the first one, because um, This version is the result of, of uh, trying to simplify uh, as, as much as, as possible the, 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 the one I'm going to, to present now. So, uh, so it, it, it deals with um, uh, a problem in combinatorics that has nothing to do with uh, with uh, with this, which is the the following. I, I want <coughs> to count the number of convex polygonal lines which and um, increasing ones which uh, join uh, the origin zero to the point of coordinates n n. I take another one. <laughs> ah, no, um, I take the first one. <laughs> if uh, I take if not, it won't be interesting for me. The inclination will. Uh, one. Uh, three. Uh, one. Okay. So, uh, you, you see, I, I, <coughs> I does not distinguish this, this uh, line with uh, that line. Okay. For me, these this are the same. Only the shape matters. Hmm? And so uh, it's a um, problem which was considered in the mid of the 90s by um, uh, Barani, uh, Verschik, and uh, Sinai. Uh, Separately, more or less, uh, but with interactions, and um, and what they proved was that the number of of of, of such uh, chains was uh, equal to the exponential of three times. Theta of three divided by theta of two to the one third times n to the two third plus some o of small o of n to the two third. 
So they proved this. And um, um, mainly, uh, what well, it seems it has nothing to do with the previous problem. But uh, if you um, uh, think at uh, the way one can code uh, lines like that, you, you can say the following. Well, I will enumerate, I enumerate all, the, um, all the vectors I, I have to use. The first one is the vector 3, 1. The second one is the vector 2, 2. But I, I don't say it's the vector 2, 2 because it would, because if I had the, the vector 1, 1 twice, I wouldn't be able to distinguish it. So I say it's, it's not the vector 2, 2, but it's the vector 1, 1 that I have used twice. This one I have used only one, only once, and this I have used twice. And the last one, cannot be divided, actually, I use, it, I, use, I use it only once. So, so the, the coding of complex chains is, is given by a function from this, starting from the, the set Q of co-prime pairs, to uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And um, actually, um, so we see the maybe I, I, I state just before um, giving an, an idea of the proof. I, I, I state what uh, our result is uh, with Julien. The, our result is, is, is twofold. The, the, the first result we have is a, a real um, a, a asymptotic e e equality for uh, n of uh, for uh, n of capital N of n. And uh, and the second one is the um, uh, the, the uh, an equivalence with Riemann uh, the Riemann conjecture for some uh, maybe I I state it first. It says the following. you are able to to, to prove that then and you, you've got the Riemann hypothesis but if you suppose the Riemann hypothesis to be true, then you have a uh, precise equivalent of uh, for n of n, which is some explicit constant c divided by n to the some power. plus 
the sum over all the roots, non-trivial roots of, of, of zeta, of, well, I write it because I have some, it has some interest in spite times n divided by uh, this I call kappa. So you see with rho having uh, real part one half, you see that uh, the, the order of magnitude of, of, of this term is n to the one sixth. And if you look more carefully at was what is in front of, of, this, of, of these terms, you have this gamma of rho. But I've, I don't know if you remember where is the first zero, the first coordinate for, for the first non-trivial zero was 14. And, and 14, but, but gamma of, of rho dec decreases like e to the, e to the minus the, the second coordinate of um, the imaginary part of rho. So the the first, the, the, large, the largest term in front of this uh, more or less oscillating uh, powers is of, uh, of the order e to the minus 14. So it's something like uh, uh, 10 to the minus 10, something like that. So uh, if you see in, in, in practice, uh, you cannot see this. this uh, you have to wait for uh, uh, 10 to the n equal to 10 to the 60 if you, you want uh, this term to compete with this, uh, this one. So uh, a nice guy uh, put on uh, this um, after our uh, papers uh, was posted. Uh, he made some computation. Put the put the put the the sequence on the O O E I S uh, uh, page, and uh, we can we can see that uh, uh, this is a good equivalent uh, for. But uh, this never we never see that. So you cannot uh, even. Uh, uh, have an idea of the the truth of not or not of the Riemann hypothesis by by this means and and simulations. So um, maybe I can say one word about um, about uh, the the proof. So, um, we... Where does the n to the 17 over 18 come from? Because it's a real equivalent? It's yeah, yes, it's a real equivalent, yes. Yes, it comes from uh, um, the, the computation of the pole at uh, s, e, e, e of poles at, at s uh, equals zero. And uh, then, uh, well, it's, uh, because it's, it, it, it's, it's strange because you, you assume that, okay, you say Riemann hypothesis is this line, and if this line is true, then in fact you get something much better. Yes, yes. Hmm. Yes, because, well, you, you can read, uh, you, you can read, uh, the, the, the spirit is, you can read the, 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 the the empty uh, zero region on the, on, on the, on the, on the power that you, you, you have. So the asymptotic is true, holds even if Riemann hypothesis fails? Or? No, 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 no. It, it, it relies, uh, yes, if it's, uh, it's true, uh, only if Riemann uh, hypothesis is true. So, um, what we use is, uh, but we, we, 
put it, the, we, we use the method of Sinai, but we, we use in a mm, more extensive uh, way, and which is the following, and uh, it's a quite a nice idea that um, actually what Sinai say is that forget about this constraint of uh, finishing at NN, and uh, we'll uh, leave the chain uh, the chains free, but uh, we mm, we we will uh, pick them at random according to to some to some distribution, which um, is the following: for uh, x and y uh, being a co prime, we. Mm, So we have this omega of x, y, which is a multiplicity of uh, this uh, vector x, y we use in the chain. And so we decide that uh, all these um, uh, multiplicities will be random, will be also independent, and um, will be Dependent and uh, geometrically distributed, with some parameter I, I cannot say. <laughs> um, but I can say the law, and it starts also at zero, so uh, <laughs> it's uh, even worse than. <laughs> And the, the parameter uh, is e to the minus beta times x plus y. No. <laughs> so that with some beta, we, you fix some beta strictly positive. And under this uh, random choice, you see that the probability for some chain to, to appear is equal to, well, uh, the product of all these, but what k is nothing <coughs> but uh, omega of x, y. So we, we have here the sum of x plus y times omega of x plus y, okay, times but this for all the chains which are ending at an n, this is nothing but the um, first coordinate of the final point, and this is the second coordinate of the final point. So this is equal to 2n. And moreover, all the, under this uh, probability distribution, all, uh, all the chains who, which are ending at the same point uh, have the same weight, okay? So that the probability that the final point is equal to nn, well, uh, it's, uh, it's a small n, I'm sorry. Uh, trouble if you want would be equal to this but since all the chains have the same power 
I will have the number of them times this the, this function which is um, a function of beta. So now the 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 um, so n of n would be equal to uh, well you see this uh, e to the two beta n times z of beta times this probability but this probability actually you you can it's it, it's the final point is nothing but the 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 um, the, the sum of uh, independent uh, integer variables. So it's um, with a local limit theorem you have you can have a precise e estimation of this. Uh, you can also calibrate uh, beta so such that the expectation of the uh, final point will be exactly equal to to n n. So um, what remains to, to, to do is have a very accurate uh, way of uh, dealing, uh, of estimating z of beta when beta goes to zero, because beta will have to go to zero if I want uh, the, the mean final point to be equal to nn. And this, so what was Sinai doing he was estimating z of beta with only the use that the, um, the set of coprime pairs ha has an asymptotic density. So it was a very weak uh, 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 material uh, he used. So uh, with this only uh, thing you can only have that but what we did was actually that we 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 could write an, an explicit uh, in integral uh, writing for z of beta and uh, which is which is uh, uh, more or less similar to uh, this, this uh, similar as this one. I don't know if I can show you. It's uh, some three or four lines, but So we are <coughs> concerned by, by this. So uh, it's a little bit harder than uh, the, the first because uh, you uh, you use the expansion of the logarithm and then you use the uh, inverse Mellin transform here, which says that e to the minus z is equal to the limit when t goes to infinity for all uh, c strictly positive. Of Z. Yes. 
So you 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 put in it in in there. And uh, so what we get is gamma of s. S is uh, s is s. But z z is this. One x plus y s hmm. and you have also the the sum of uh, all the co prime pairs, but now we are not afraid of it anymore because we know the trick. So this sum will um, make some data of s plus 1 uh, in factor appear, gamma of s. This uh, is uh, like before uh, with the trick uh, data of s. And you have uh, some data plus data s minus 1. So you see, when you want to estimate log of z when beta is goes to zero, then you see you see that you you are you are looking at the the residue, and you see the first one comes from the from f for uh, s equal to to two. From this, two minus one is one, and so you see residue which is data of, of 3 divided by data of 2. It uh, reminds you of divided by uh, b to the, to, the, to the square. And uh, gamma of 2 is 1. Uh, but you, you have much more than that because you can, uh, you can uh, use contour uh, and uh, uh, examine all the residues for for uh, um. uh, okay so it's uh, I think Are there any comments or questions? When you apply the residue, you need some control on the growth of the data function on the imaginary large imaginary. Um, no, um, as as long as you are not on the the gamma uh, the, the the gamma is uh, is very makes all, all, all the things very secure what what is um, technical is when you when you when you want to you you have your contour and you you have to cross the critical uh, line then uh, we need some uh, uh, fancy result of uh, of uh, Valiron in the uh, 1920s. <laughs> okay. So you had this nice picture of the n by n grid with the points in Q color, color uh, like points that are co prime color. Uh, so, so my question is, does this have a Benjamin-Schramm limit? 
<laughs> uh, I, ju I just learned what, 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 what it was. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, Uh, what, what, uh, how do you define the connections? Uh, so you look at look at it from a random point and see if uh, that planned random color graph has a distribution of. So you know that the, the, the probability that the point is going to is, is converging to something, which is this six over pi squared. But yeah. But you can ask where is the probability of the point and then its neighbor or something like that. Ah. Ah, yes, 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 I see. Ah, oui. Hmm. If this all converges, you can. Uh, uh, I, uh, yes, it's uh, right now. I don't know. Uh, yeah, night version. So you have a, also a naive question about the other fast theorem. So, can you replace geometry by some other distribution, like Poisson? Uh, it's a very good question <laughs> because uh, you can do it, uh, you, uh, and it's uh, you can do it, uh, but not uh, w with uh, with some uh, ad hoc distribution. I, I think with with um, a zeta distribution. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not long and it's funny. Mm. Uh, so the data di di distribution is um, actually the parameter is simple. <laughs> because, uh, uh, it's um, you take it and. Uh, well, uh, I can try. Uh, it, ha it has some interest at the end. Um, what you get is... Uh, hmm? <laughs> for x, y, uh, co-prime. Okay. And then again, you use uh, the trick. Uh, you you multiply and divide by uh, one over k to two s in order to And what you get is uh, nothing but uh, this is equal to that. So then you have, it's completely explicit in that case. And you see that when s goes to 1, which uh, is the case when you have large, uh, uh, the probability goes to uh, uh, 6 behind uh, yeah, the distance. Yeah, <laughs> But for other, um, it, it's it's good for 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 the um, fluctuations to to be not to 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 large that the distribution uh, decrease de 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 rapidly decrease, but but. Um <laughs> If it's solid, if you take a triple of integer, then uh, yes, it, it it was the same way. Yes, but uh, what di I did not uh, try was a number of integers which is growing to infinity in smaller, <laughs> in a small o of uh, the parameter. I didn't try this, this but uh, for finite, uh, yes, it uh, goes the same way. So let us thank uh, Nathan Nathaniel.